Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can easily build a simple application utilizing Superbase Storage. And the kind of application that I'm trying to build is a simple photo sharing or in this case, a screenshot sharing app where the user can upload a photo and then that photo will be sent to Superbase and later the user will retrieve the URL of the photo. The process is pretty simple because we are going to be using an AI code editor like Windsor or you can also use Cursor AI. And at the end of the day, you should be able to create a simple application that utilizing the Superbase storage. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing that you need to do is you have to go to superbase.com and create an account. I have created my account on Superbase so I can just go to dashboard and here I'm going to create a new organization. This is completely optional. If you already have an organization, you can skip this process and just start building a project. Now I'm going to click new organization and I'm going to call this organization my organization and the type is personal and also make sure you are using the free plan and click create organization now with the organization ready we can start building the project here i'm going to call the project screenshot share and i'm going to just click generate the password to set the database password database is not something that we want to use in this video but if you want to create an application that requires a database then you might want to save this database password somewhere in your device I'm going to select in the region. Uh, I guess I'm going to select in the automated selection, which is the Singapore. And let's click create new project. All right, now Superbase is setting up the project and this is usually will take anywhere between one to three minutes. So we are going to wait. By the way, it is worth mentioning that for this particular application, I'm not going to be using the user authentication and also database from Superbase. But if you are interested, you can actually check out my previous videos about it. And in this video, I just want to focus on using the Superbase storage and basically the application allows anyone to upload a picture, upload something and that item will be stored in the Superbase storage. Now that the project has been set up, you can go to the storage section right here and then you want to navigate to new bucket. So in Superbase, bucket is really just a super folder. This is going to be the name of the folder where the user can upload the file. So basically every single item that will be uploaded from your application will be stored in this bucket. I'm going to call this bucket, let's say screen shots and make sure it is a public bucket so anyone can see the content and then i'm gonna go with additional configuration let's restrict the file upload size i don't want anyone to just upload 10 gigabytes of file i just want to limit it to maybe let's say five megabytes and by the way if you're using the free plan in superbase you are limited to up to 50 megabytes so keep that in mind and lastly oh, i forgot i clicked the wrong section let's try it again okay it's the size next we want to specify what is the file types that are allowed in this particular bucket i'm going to be using the wildcard image so basically any image format should be allowed to be uploaded to this bucket and formats like png jpeg gif webp should be allowed these formats can be uploaded to this particular bucket and when you're done with the configuration of the bucket you can click save and then we are ready to start building the user interface or the application of this project now let's fire up windsurf and then i'm going to click file file click open folder i'm going to create a new folder for this particular project let's call this one screenshot share and enter i'm going to open the folder and click select folder right so this is the windsurf interface and as you can see on the left side here there is a explorer section where you can see all the files or all the codes that are going to be forming your application and on the right side you can open the cascade window where you can basically interact with the ai you can send the prompt and ai will code everything for you so with that being said I'm going to be starting sending the first prompt and this is the prompt that I'm going to send to the AI. Don't worry, I'm going to put this prompt in the video description and this is actually a very simple prompt. So I divided the prompt into two sections. The first section is the application features. This is just the general introduction of what is the application should look like or basically what is the feature of the application. So number one, I want to generate a beautiful looking web application called screenshot share using Superbase. Okay. Uh, number two, the application allows the user to upload and share an image file and number three the user can either upload an image via the upload button or a drag and drop method i think this is actually quite a popular way to upload something into a website interface and then number four the user can only upload one image at a time number five once the image has been uploaded provide an image url that the user can copy and share so that's basically the idea of this application uh, they can upload an image for free and they can share a photo or a screenshot to anyone and everyone basically can see the file that he or she just uploaded now uh, let's talk about the tag requirements and this is something that 
will require some explanation. So number one, use plain HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Again, I don't want to complicate this project. Let's just start with a simple HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I'm not going to be using any library or any framework, just, you know, the good old HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And with that being said, this project is not meant for production. There are other security considerations, like we have to set up an environment variable where we can store the super base credentials safely. But given that we are going to be using just simple HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, that thing is basically not possible. So again, this is for a local project. This is not for production ready. And then number two, import super base client library via CDN. So super base client library is really just a module that we really need in order to be able to use super base in our application or website. And here I specified that we are going to use CDN. So there is there are two methods. There is a CDN method. There is also NPM method. So a CDN is essentially we are going to load the module from another server into our application when the application is being used while the npm method is basically we are going to download that module into the project so either way any method can work but cdn is definitely a lot less complicated here now on the number three this is very important the name of the bucket is screenshots you have to specify the name of the bucket in your prompt and then i just add some extra information about the bucket like it was a public bucket five megabytes of file upload limit and a allows image format image wildcard and then number four generate a uuid to name the image files so this is something that i have to explain so uid is really just a randomizer i think that's the simplest way to explain it it's really just a random string of 36 characters including letters numbers and dash and you can actually have seen that in a lot of applications for example if you are using something like chat gpt if you create a new chat let's say hello you'll see that at the top here on the address bar there's going to be this random string of letters and number and this is an uuid this is just a random string it's just a convention to name something randomly so it will ensure that every single item in your project or in your application is going to be unique so that's just a standardization don't worry too much about that we just want to use uuid to name the image files and then number five provide a clear error handling for a user and developer via console log so error handling is something that you again have seen before on many websites when you are creating let's say an account on facebook but but you didn't enter your email you only entered the password then there's going to be a message telling you that hey you haven't entered the email please enter your email that's just one form of error handling and the purpose is always to let the user know about what's going on and also it is very helpful for the developer because the developer can see the console log console log is located right here you can right click on any page click inspect and it will open this menu and you can go to console and it will reveal all the problems that might be happening in the website or application that you're building uh there are many warnings and errors here but they are not coming from only one source there is a problem from a chrome extension there is a problem from a website but when you're building an app and when you are testing it on your browser you can look at the console and see what's going on and you can actually use that as a starting point to debug or solve the problem now that was console let's continue and finally number six the following is a super base project url and api key for the app this is something that we need to provide manually so let's go back to super base and navigate to home and we want to copy the project url and also the api key these two pieces of information that you have to put into your prompt now i'm going to copy the project url let's go back to windsurf and i'm going to call this one project url and paste and then let's go back to the browser i'm going to copy the api key let's go back and this is the api key and i'm going to control and v to paste the key so that's basically the prompt you can modify the prompt as you like but basically if you want to use the super best storage then that's the basic prompt that you need to incorporate into your prompting now if you're ready make sure you are selecting cloud 3.5 sonnet i think that's still the best model at the moment and enable right mode and i'm going to just click the enter key or uh, click this send button to start building the application let's do it okay now it is still in progress uh, there are other things that it needs to create but i just want to show you that the cdn uh, the cdn which is the super base client library is 
here this is the cdn link that basically has to be loaded every time the user is visiting the website so this link will load the superbase client library and therefore it will enable superbase to be used in the application right i think it is done i'm going to just click accept all and you can see that there are at least three different files there's going to be the html javascript and also the style.css for styling of the website this is going to be detecting the look of the website html is for the structure and javascript is for the logic or the function of the website uh, it actually created this upload icon svg which is something that i didn't ask but sometimes i might provide an extra item that may be useful for the website like in this case this is an upload button which actually i have no idea how it's going to look so we have to test this application first but how do you do that well uh, my favorite way to test a web application is by using an extension you can go to extensions and you want to search for live server and the extension that i'm using is live server also known as live server you can install it and then you can go back to explorer and you can right click on index.html click open with live server it will open your browser showing the application so this is the application and actually we can just right click and click inspect because we want to make sure that there is no error on this application before testing and right now there is an error of uh, this uncut reference error cannot access super best before initialization okay i just want to copy and uh, basically paste the error message into our uh, codium into windsurf so just right click paste and then and hopefully it will solve the problem all right now it seems to be a minor issue let's just click accept all and let's go back to the browser i'm going to refresh the page and yeah yeah, I think it is working. There is this error message, but trust me, this is not coming from the app. This is actually coming from the Chrome extension that I was using. So this is this has nothing to do with this application. And by the way, uh, depending on what website that you are opening right now or what Chrome extensions that you have on your browser, you might see in different warnings or different error messages. But just make sure that it was a problem coming from your application, not from other extension that you're using. You can actually just click on the file here and it will show you uh, where the error is coming from but anyway i think we can just try uploading a file and see how this thing is going to work out i have tons of images and i'm going to just drag and drop let's try this file and yeah okay new row violates row level security policy well that's actually expected to happen because there is one thing that we didn't do at the configuration in the super base storage bucket so let's go back to super base and navigate to storage and here this is the screenshot as you can see there's nothing here there's no new file because we haven't set up the policy or basically the rule of this screenshot uh, bucket in superbase let's go to policies and then here are the screenshots you want to click new policy and click for full customization and then here i'm going to call this one screenshot policy and here you have to specify what operation is allowed for this particular bucket as you can see there is no policy at all it's nothing that basically means the bucket is not accessible so we have to enable at least something here and in this case which is i want to allow the user to upload a picture and therefore i need to enable the insert policy so as you can see the upload section is highlighted meaning that now anyone can add something into the bucket you can also enable other options like select update and delete but uh, the other three options are usually much more relevant if you are creating a user authentication where the user can control what are the things that they are uploading they can also uh, change modify or delete the items they have uploaded into the bucket but since the application is basically allows anyone to upload a picture without having to create an account the insert policy is a up. so when you're done you can just click review and click save policy now successfully save policy we can actually go back to the application that you are building and i'm going to refresh the page and i will try uploading a picture again so let's try this picture and okay the object exceeded maximum allowed size well i was wondering what was the size of that file properties it was 300 it was 300 something kilobytes so i believe i made a mistake in the configuration i think it was five megabytes oh it was five bytes okay my bad my bad okay let's try it again now i'm going to refresh the page let's 
try it again blurring this image and just wait and there you go this is the url of the picture and i can copy and let's open a new tab and there you go so this is the picture now you can see that this is the url of the superbase storage bucket and as you can see there is a 36 digit of uuid there are letters and numbers and also they are separated by a few dashes so that will ensure that every single item uploaded into the bucket is completely unique if you go back to the superbase storage bucket and if you refresh or reload the page you should be able to see the item that we just uploaded and this is the item you have absolute control over this photo you can download you can get the url you can also just delete the file right from your superbase dashboard and when you do it and if you refresh the page yeah basically it's going to show you this error message uh, the file is no longer exists in the super best storage so uh that's basically it there are definitely other things that you can do with the super best storage but hopefully this should be enough for a basic introduction of the super best storage anyway as i mentioned earlier this project is not for production this is for testing and you should only run this locally on your computer because on the app.js your super best credentials like the url and also the api key is here it's exposed to the public and it is not meant to be seen by the public you want to hide these two pieces of information i actually made a mistake on my previous video where i'm just telling to use the .env file and just call it a day but in reality setting up the .env or environment variable is much more complicated than that and there are many things that you need to learn and prepare before you can implement the environment variable but that's a topic for another video anyway i hope you find this video to be helpful if you want to learn more about prompting to build an application then please consider subscribing to this channel and i'll see you on the next video have a great day and take care